Well, I'd like to introduce somebody who needs absolutely no introduction here in Columbia, South Carolina. Welcome him back to, uh, uh, to Columbia, uh, his wife Molly, Mila, and, and, and uh, Decker. Uh, excited to have Connor on board. You know, in this position, Marcus, when we hired him, he had expressed to me his desire to further his education in psychology. He's going to study abroad in, in Europe and, and uh, got a program that he's really excited about. He expressed to me that in December. That's felt like he, he wanted to do it at this time. And the first person that came into my mind was Connor Shaw, a guy that's the winningest quarterback in South Carolina history, uh, can relate with our players. Uh, we, we truly believe in outlets here for our players. Uh, I think we have as good a support off the field as anybody in the country. Uh, you, you talk in terms of Kristen Coggins and our nutrition program, and, you, and Paul Jackson talked about that the other day. Uh, you look at the, the story, uh, Gene Fournette from the Jacksonville newspaper that recently wrote about Hayden Hurst and our mental health department as far as Tim Malone and Rachel Sharp and the fantastic job that our training staff does to support our players. Reverend Jackson's a part of that, and now Connor is a huge part of that in our Beyond Football program, our life skills, and just being a mentor for our guys every day, live the life here at williams Bryce Stadium on this campus, and uh, really excited to have uh, Connor join our family. And Connor, go ahead and open up for you. <coughs> yeah, well, first, really happy for Marcus and Miranda. Uh, I know that's exciting for them. Anyone that knows Marcus understands the, the impact he's had on this program in this state. And I know that many more people will deeply benefit from him uh, earning his psychology degree. Uh, but I, I'm really excited to be back. I'm thankful to Coach Muschamp. I'm thankful to Coach Tanner for offering me a chance to return uh, to my alma mater. Uh, and really, it was kind of confirmed this past Sunday night in our first team meeting how much I really missed this type of environment. You know, Coach going through the goals and expectations, seeing guys take down notes, getting ready to work and compete. So I can't wait to be a part of their journey. Uh, but as excited as I am, you know, this is not about me. Uh, every guy in that locker room chose the University of South Carolina because they believed that they would be developed into outstanding football players, earn a great education, and leave here as mature and respectable men. So when I look at my role, career building, mental health, life skills, mentorship, you know, it certainly resonates with me. And to, to kind of dive deeper into that, you're looking at professional development, network, self-awareness, you know, helping them with decisions that set them up for success, and then developing a plan while they're student athletes at South Carolina. And that includes football. You know, I wouldn't want to compartmentalize football and everything else because we're going to use football to accomplish what they want to accomplish outside of ball. And so, you know, my first step is just to get to know the guys. Uh, the more I know them, the more I can help them. I'm not going to pretend like I'm some know-it-all that has all the answers. Uh, but what I, what I will offer is authentic feedback, open dialogue to whatever they feel like they need help with. And I do understand what they're going through, kind of how busy they are, what they're navigating through. And, um, you know, I can certainly offer some experience that I've had as a student athlete and then, you know, in the NFL and then, you know, learning how to be a professional outside of football. Uh, but I, I'm really excited and um, I open up to, to any questions. Raise your uh, hand. We've got a microphone to you. David's not here, so Ben gets the first one. Again. I guess, Connor, what was sort of the process that kind of led you to this? What was the, the communication, that kind of stuff from Coach Muschamp? Yeah, Coach Muschamp, uh, you know, reached out to me once he heard that uh, Marcus was pursuing his education, and uh, you know, heard from him and, and and Coach Tanner. The opportunity came up, and and that I was on their mind, and obviously hit home for me. I think I always had aspirations to be back a part of this program and in, in, in some sort of role, and so I think the, the timing really worked out. My wife, my two kids, and myself are, are excited to be back a part of this program and and ready to uh, see how I can help. I have one question for each of you. Uh, Connor, what do you think is the um, best part of your story that you can share with kids? I, I know you do a lot of time speaking with kids, but, but yeah. what is the one piece of, of advice or something from your story that you feel that kids can most benefit from? Yeah, well, my story, I mean, shoot, it didn't happen overnight. You know, I, there was some adversity th through injuries. Uh, while I was a player here, kind of feeling like an outcast sometimes when you're not competing with everyone else. I know there's a lot of guys that go through that in the course of their career. And then that kind of transitional phase, playing in the NFL, uh, you know, not getting a lot of play time, playing time. And then, you know, finding out who I am outside of football. Uh, when I talked about developing that plan while they're student athletes, that resonates with me because I feel like I de did that in the, the back end of my career, almost after my playing days were over. And so that kind of bounced around a little bit, but 
is important for me to, to develop as a professional outside of football, help me develop a skill set that I needed, uh, you know, understanding how to be more financially responsible, navigating, uh, and understanding how to manage my time and schedule better, and then filtering through opportunities that are worthwhile and not. And so all of those attributes, all the things I've learned, I feel like I could kind of help guide, help mentor some of, uh, some of these players that are going through some of the same things. And Will, how, how important was it to you? You had a legendary figure here in Marcus, mm -hmm. and you're able to replace him with another legendary figure, but also someone who has a recent history here in South Carolina. Well, I think it's important. I mean, our players know who Connor is. You know, they, they know, they know his, uh, his playing days here at the University of South Carolina, obviously what he accomplished on the field, but what I'm excited about is what he's going to bring them off the field. And uh, his experiences as, as being a Gamecock and, and being one of the greats of all time that played here. And so I think that that's a huge part of it. But when you meet Connor, you see how authentic and how real he is, and you see uh, what he's going to be able to do as far as his mentorship to our student athletes. Uh, Connor, welcome back, uh, first Thank of all. You. Hey, you know, kind of going off Rick's question a little bit, how difficult a process was it for you to get to this point? Because you were a pretty driven guy here. Football was – you were intense when you talked to us about football, that's for yeah. sure. How difficult was yeah, it to get to this point? To get to where you are now. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm 28 years old, and I feel like I'm the oldest 28-year-old in the game. I mean, had two kids uh, right out the gate, and then uh, going to Cleveland, going to Chicago, coming back to Greenville, having about seven, eight months at Furman, and getting into more of uh, some private business opportunities past two years. Uh, so it's been a bit of the, the road more traveled, but I couldn't be more excited uh, for this role in particular uh, with this program and, and just learn from all the resources that Coach Muschamp talked about with Kristen and Paul and, and uh, you know, Maria over at the Doty uh, Academic Center. And, and I'm looking forward to what it leads to in the future. You know, I want to be here for a very, very long time. Uh, so, like I said, we're just ready to get going. Um, Connor, right here. Um, is there a particular issue you see student athletes needing more help with like nowadays as compared to when you were a player? Um, I'm sure there's a lot of similarities. I think some of the things that stick out to me, if I go back and, and try to figure out, you know, what were the, th the challenges I faced and some of the challenges my teammates faced was kind of uh, navigating the, the time. You know, this is football is very militant, like scheduled to the very hour of each day. And, and so um, if they can be efficient in their time, but also understand that there are so many educational programs and resources at their disposal. And so part of my job is just connect them with whatever is relevant to their needs. Way back to left, Mike. Hey, Connor, welcome back. Um, it. So a couple questions for you. One, what did you like about uh, the plan that, that Marcus set up in this job? Uh, and then how do you want to put your own stamp on it? Yeah, uh, really appreciate what Marcus has done the past two years. Uh, you know, him hearing him speak to the players on Sunday night, you could tell that he had developed a lot of relationships with those guys and it wasn't easy for him to walk away. Uh, and I think he'll still continue to contribute. But you know, he'll be a resource for me. I, I look forward to continue picking Marcus's brain. And, and the great thing about it is there's Dylan Thompson in, in Detroit. There's Jack Easterby in Houston that I've already contacted. And there's a lot of different uh, leadership seminars and, and outlets that I, that I just want to be a sponge so I can come back and kind of make my stamp here. Uh, Connor, as a former player and coming back and seeing this facility and some of the other things that are happening around campus, uh, yeah. how, how, are, are you jealous at all that this, some of this stuff went in place when you were here, or, or is uh, it just kind of nice for the current guys? No, it's exciting for the players. I joke around and say that you know our class helped fund this place, but it's uh, it's exciting to be a part of. You know, it's it's better than any professional facility I've ever been in, and uh, you know it's a, it's a one stop shop. I mean, there's so many resources where you know dining and academic tutors and. Being around the, the, the coaching staff is probably the biggest thing that Coach Muschamp would probably attest to. I mean, when I was playing, we'd have to walk around the, the stadium to go meet with Coach Spurrier and our position coaches, and we didn't see him a whole lot. So for everyone uh, just to be here together and consolidated is a, is a really big deal. And in, in, in your playing days, was, were there any individuals who, who helped you in sort of the, the role that you're going to be doing? Is there anybody that you look yes, back on that the, one? Yes, absolutely. The, the first name that comes to mind is, is Gloria. She was our, our sports psych in Chicago. And, you know, to be honest, I wasn't that type of person to go uh, initiate those conversations with someone in that position. Uh, but, you know, I broke my tib fib in 2016, was playing at a high level. And then the next year, I, you know, I tore my hamstring and really didn't know where to go from there. So she helped me kind of navigate through a lot of that. 
And, uh, you know, she's someone I've already connected with and kept all of her material that she gave me and, and PowerPoint presentations that I, I feel like will be beneficial in this role. Connor, you say you're the oldest 28-year-old in the game. Yeah. Uh, for you, realizing that players are different now, student athletes are different, uh, the coach is different, and, you know, things of that nature, how important is it for you to be able to adapt to uh, the new wave of, of student athletes? Yeah, I think, again, step one is for me to just uh, get to know them, understand who they are, where they're from, where they're studying, what are their passions and hobbies, so we can feed that. Uh, but like I said, the more, more I get to know them and more – uh, I get to understand the, the dynamic of a locker room and kind of that mediator between the coaching staff, uh, someone that they can trust. Uh, that's, that's a position that I don't take lightly. I take very seriously and uh, look forward to developing those relationships. Connor, clearly you're in, you, you've got responsibility for everybody in that locker room, but do you think you can bring something to the quarterbacks on the roster given your understanding of the spotlight and pressure on that position? Um, you know, they have a, a great coach in, in Mike Bobo uh, and a great support staff here, and they know what they're doing from that standpoint. I think it's going to be fun for me to just go sit in the offensive meeting room, a quarterback meeting room, get to know the quarterback room, maybe talk a little bit of football. But, you know, my extent to my involvement with football is, is going to be being in sync with Coach Muschamp to see what's a win for, for our guys on and off the field. But in terms of the off the field and the pressure, just because of the spotlight on yeah. the Absolutely. Yeah, I think it's uh, a lot of it's blocking out the noise, understanding, uh, you know, what's important. How do I progress each day, whether it's on the field, whether it's in the meeting room and in the weight room. And that's that's what you have to focus on. There's a lot of things, especially as a quarterback, that uh, present distractions for you. And uh, so it's really just uh, understanding what's important and, and really hone in on that. Well, obviously, you coached against Connor, but what was the start of your guys' personal relationship? How far back does that go, and how did that kind of develop through the years? Uh, just when I got to Columbia, you know, Connor was around a good bit, and uh, you know, just uh, obviously, Coach Spur and I have a, have a great relationship, and he always talked about Connor's leadership ability, the type of player he was, how he positively affected everybody around him, what kind of guy you want in the locker room, and then you you come to Columbia and meet him, and you realize that's exactly who he is, and that's what he's about, and. Uh, uh, just, you know, as far as those things are concerned and, and meeting him and getting to know him better and seeing how real and authentic he is and his passion for South Carolina and, and, the, and the University of South Carolina. Go back to Josh. Will, to follow up on kind of what I was talking about, Connor, from your playing days until now, how have you seen the outside pressure increase on these players, especially that position at quarterback, and, and what does uh, somebody in this role do to – well, I mitigate think, that. I personally feel like he'll be a tremendous asset for those guys at that position because it's easier to talk through things if you've been there and done that, and, and he certainly has at a high level. So, uh, so I, I don't think there's any question that that will be a huge benefit to us moving forward. Um, because of social media, everybody has a platform. Everybody has an opinion, no matter how ignorant it might be. Um, they, they do. And so – you know, I think what he said is great. You know, control the controllables, control the things that are important. And, you know, someone's opinion on Twitter is probably not very important, to be honest with you. So let's lock in on those things. But that's hard when you're dealing with 17, 18, 19, 20 years old because they're concerned about the perception of things. You know, they're not totally focused in on the reality of what's going on and how we need to improve and get better. And as, a, as an individual player, as, an, as a side of the ball, as a football team or whatever the case may be. So... Everyone has a platform nowadays, and, and that's uh, unfortunate, but that's the way it is. Connor, you kind of talked about the timing being right for this move. Just what about this made the timing right, and kind of what excites you about kind of coming to this program when you are? Well, well first, um, regardless of the timing, it's an opportunity to come back to the university that I love and that, that I invested so much into and invested in me. Uh, so did I enjoy what I was doing before this? Sure, I think, again, I learned a lot. It was a great skill set that I think will be transferable to this type of role. But, you know, I, I, again, I had aspirations to be a part of this university. And, um, you know, I love the, what they're building here. It's very special in, in the staff that he's brought in and the, and the guys that he's recruiting. You know, I think the first conversation that we had was, you know, we don't have a lot of, uh, you know, bad guys, like character-wise. You know, these guys want to learn. They, they want to be sponges, uh, and they want to work hard. And that, those guys are easy to work with. Uh, so 
for the timing. It could have been two months ago. It could have been two months from now, and I would have been ride or die. Well, obviously, between Connor and Marcus, two of the you know greatest players to play at this program, what is the benefit of having a a former USC player in this role, and especially one that that well, players know? Someone that's been on the campus has been through. Um, you know the gauntlet of, of working here and, and playing here and understanding that you know that part of it. Uh, again, it's no different than what Josh asked earlier about the quarterback position. He's been there and done that at, at the highest level at our university. So I think it's a huge, you know, benefit to have somebody that's walked the halls, uh, that understands, you know, you know, being a gamecock. I'm just curious, being from Georgia, what's your relationship like with? Mike Bobo, did he recruit you at all coming out of school, or what was what it's was actually, that process like? Uh, indirect relationship with him. So his dad, George Bo, Bobo, trained me uh, as a youngin in Raven County, Georgia, uh, where my folks are at now. My brother's head coach there, and and so uh, I've met Mike a couple of times through him. Uh, but I know that I know what he stands for. I know how real he is, and I know his knowledge of this game is going to be is a tremendous asset. He for didn't everyone. offer you? No, he didn't offer me. Nah, that's a bad deal. <laughs> I'll, I'll say this though, even if you did, you beat him. Yeah, <laughs> I grew up a big Spurrier fan, so my my uh, my rooms were, were were blue and orange growing up. So I know maybe I just wanted to be different right outside of Athens, but yeah, that's kind of how I ended up here actually. Other questions? Any housekeeping questions for Coach? Anybody? Yeah, I think it's Come on, Fink. I mean, we're, at, we're, 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 we're about out the gate. And then uh, ben raises his hand. Uh, obviously, Coach Hutzler, Hutzler yeah. takes that role at Texas. Sure. I guess uh, what was your reaction watching that process and also what kind of a challenge is it sort of replacing a guy who could both do the linebackers and do special teams like he uh, did? Well, again, we're going to make the best hire for the University of South Carolina. appreciate Coleman and his contributions here. And, you know, that phone call came last week, so that's something that I've been working on and talked to several people over the weekend, a couple guys yesterday and, and, and another guy today. So we'll, we'll make the best decision for South Carolina. Would, would the hope to be able to have that in place before the next time you can get uh, on the when, – Whenever we can make the best decision for South Carolina is when we will, whether it's tomorrow or two weeks from now. So we'll we'll make that decision then. How comfortable are you guys? I think the recruiting period starts this week Friday. Friday. So yeah. how how good do you guys feel about the ability to close this class strong? Well, you know, we got, I think we got a good plan in place as far as the guys we we feel like that uh, we we need to sign in February, and uh, so I think we have a good plan in place at this time. But we'll we'll be back on the road on Friday, and we got a big weekend this weekend with some good young players coming in town unofficially. Will, do you know when you're starting spring practice and uh, the yeah, spring game? I believe it's April 4th is a spring game. Uh, we're starting February 27th. I believe it's that Wednesday, the last Wednesday in February. And we'll have five practices before spring break like we've done before and, uh, and come back and finish it up April 4th. That's right. Um, uh, would Coach Kranz be a candidate to yeah, move back is. on the field? Mm -hmm. Sure. Anything else? Good. Steady. All righty. All right. Have a great day. Appreciate it.